Hi, I'm Thomas. Welcome back. Our topic is complex numbers. In this lesson, we'll learn about the geometrical effects of performing operations with complex numbers. We're given two complex numbers, z1 and z2. z1 equals 3 plus 2i. z2 equals negative 1 plus 4i. We'll look at five scenarios of operations with these complex numbers and evaluate the geometrical representation for each operation in an Argand diagram. Problem 1, z1 plus z2. I can add the real and imaginary parts of z1 and z2 to get to 2 plus 6i. For the geometrical analysis, I'm going to plot the imaginary numbers in the Argand diagram, starting with z1, 3 plus 2i, and z2, negative 1 plus 4i. And I will create position vectors for both complex numbers. Looking at the result 2 plus 6i, I'll go through the same process 2 and 6. I'll create a position vector for this result. And what we see is that the geometrical representation of adding two complex numbers is represented by the addition of two vectors. I can confirm using the parallelogram rule that this resultant vector is the addition of two vectors. Thus, the addition of two complex numbers is represented geometrically as the addition of two vectors. Problem 2, z1 minus z2. We can perform the subtraction to arrive at 4 minus 2i. Again, we're going to show the complex numbers in the Argand diagram starting with z1, 3 plus 2i. I'll also use a position vector to represent z1. z2, we're subtracting. So I'm going to take the opposite of z2, positive 1 minus 4i, and I will plot that point and also create a position vector. Now looking at the result of the subtraction, 4 minus 2i, also plotting the point and then creating the position vector. What we see is that the geometrical representation of this subtraction is the subtraction of two vectors. Subtracting vectors means that we take our first vector and add the opposite of the second vector, which we have represented as the opposite of z2, and as referenced in problem 1, here we can also use the parallelogram rule to confirm that the resultant vector is the result of the subtraction of z1 minus z2, which is the same as the addition of z1 plus the opposite of z2. Thus, the subtraction of two complex numbers is represented geometrically as the subtraction of two vectors. Problem 3, z1 times i. The result of this multiplication is negative 2 plus 3i. We'll go to the Argand diagram starting with z1, 3 plus 2i, creating a position vector. Now let's do the same for the result of our calculation and identify the relationship between the two vectors. Negative 2 plus 3i, putting in a position vector. What I observe is that the relationship from the starting vector to the resultant vector resulting from the multiplication by i is a rotation of 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Thus, the geometric representation of the multiplication of a complex number by i is a rotation 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Continuing to problem 4, z1 divided by i, the result of this division is 2 minus 3i, Going to the Argand diagram, we'll start with z1, 3 plus 2i. Now the result of our calculation, 2 minus 3i. And what we see in this problem is from the original vector to the resultant vector, another 90 degree rotation, this time clockwise. Thus division by i is represented geometrically 
has a rotation 90 degrees clockwise. To give a bit of guidance on the algebraic solution to problem 4, recall that when we're dividing by a complex number, we want to multiply by the conjugate of that complex number over itself. So the first step in 4, algebraically, is to multiply by negative i over negative i. Working through that process, you'll get to the solution 2 minus 3i. And finally, problem 5, we want the conjugate of z1. The asterisk represents the conjugate of a complex number, z1, 3 plus 2i, thus the conjugate 3 minus 2i. Let's go to the Argand diagram to identify the geometrical representation of a complex number and its conjugate, starting with z1, 3 plus 2i, plotting that point and putting in the position vector, 3 minus 2i, plotting that point and putting in the position vector. We see in this case that the resultant vector is a reflection of the original vector through the x-axis, and our rule is that the geometrical representation of the conjugate of a complex number is a reflection through the x-axis. We've completed our requirements, and this concludes the lesson on geometrical representation of complex number operations.